to Peace Talk. This is Brother Yasser Aslam. And welcome again to our second episode where you learn about Islam and Muslims from Muslims. And inshallah today our topic is Islam and hygiene. Islamic hygiene, what we have to say about that. And here with me is Dr. Sabil Ahmad, the Director of Gain Peace. Inshallah, without further ado, let's get started inshallah. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I start in the name of God, the most beneficent and merciful, and welcome and greet all of you with the Islamic greeting of Assalamu Alaikum. Peace of God be upon each single one of you. Now, Yasir, when people, when they look at the words Islam and modern science, they may be thinking, you know, what is the connection? And why are we having this show, especially in these times in the age of coronavirus? But in fact, inshallah, in this half an hour of show, you'll be amazed to find out that not only there is a connection, but I would say that uh, our modern science is catching up to the Islamic hygiene. It's catching up to the Islamic etiquettes, Islamic solutions, preventive measures, and recommendations. Sure. So for all, mm -hmm. any of all of these reasons, that's the reason we are doing uh, today's uh, show, which is uh, Islam and modern science, right? Inshallah. And especially now with what's going on, you know, uh, many of us are at home because of, you know, COVID-19, the coronavirus. And let's take a look at what our faith has to say about hygiene and how it kind of, you know, compares with modern science and what we are hearing currently from the CDC. You know, when it comes to Islam, Islam gives a comprehensive way of life and solutions to humanity. Uh, he has given us guidance of who is the creator, what is the purpose of life. What will happen to us in the hereafter? How can we go to paradise? But today we will just you know, focus on the Islamic hygiene and the concept of the physical purity. You know, first and foremost, it says in the Quran, chapter number nine, verse number 108, that Allah loves those who purify themselves. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in one of his famous narrations, he said, right? Yasser, you remember this from Sunday school? Yes, I do remember. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. Cleanliness is half of the faith, right? Wow, cleanliness is half of the faith. So that's how much adamant Islam is uh, about keeping ourselves clean. But cleanliness itself is attached to paradise. There is a saying of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that the key to paradise is prayer and the key to prayer is purification. If I ask you this question, that what is the number one recommendation Center for Disease Control has for individuals. What would you say? It is to wash your hands. Wash your hands. Hand washing, according to CDC, is the single most important means of preventing the spread of infection. This is modern science. We know this. According to the germ theory of infection developed in 1909, this is the recommendation that the best way to prevent the spread of germs from human to human. Obviously, we have to cover ourselves and we have to make sure we constantly wash our hands. So this is what Islam says. And these are all coming from the Quran, which is the word of Allah, or from the sayings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that right after we wake up from the sleep, we just don't want to go to the internet and start working, not even praying, even before praying, we are supposed to go and wash our hands. So look at this. CDC in the 21st century, Islam, Muhammad, peace be upon him, way back in the 7th century, right? Alhamdulillah. The number two recommendation to prevent diseases or the infection or the coronavirus is the lockdown, right? Stay at home. So every single state, every single city, almost all the countries in the world, they are in a state of lockdown. You know, if you look at the history of uh, the infections, uh, initially in the Western countries, this is Europe, right? I'm just going to spend maybe two, three minutes on this. One of the biggest calamity in the history of humanity, it happened uh, in 1347 in Europe, known as the Black Death. This is the bubonic plague. About 20 million people Europeans. So that means about one third of the European population, they died because of the infection from the bubonic plague. So at that time, the very first time, Westerners, non-Muslims, the Europeans, they discovered the benefit of quarantine. How about in Philadelphia? And in 1918, the Spanish flu, the influenza, and currently. So we all know that quarantine uh, in the states, in the country, so they don't travel and spread the diseases and vice versa. 
We learned it by trial and error, right? So this is what the modern world, the 21st century is teaching us. But way back, about 1400 years ago, the very first time in humanity, the Umayyad Caliph, Al-Walid, he quarantined the people who were infectious. It was very first time done in the history of humanity by Muslims in 706, about 1400 years ago. But all of their recommendations are going back to one narration from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who we consider as the last and the final prophet to guide humanity to the worship of one God. So he said that if you hear of an outbreak of plague or infection in a land, do not enter it. And if the plague breaks out in a place where you are in it, do not leave that place. That means you're su supposed to self-quarantine yourself. So this is coming from the seventh century, right? Mm -hmm. And our modern science, starting from 1300s all the way to even now, we realize this is a preventive measure and the solution for any spread of infection. Amazing, right, Yasser? Yeah, subhanAllah. Like we had this wisdom, you know, um, 1400 years ago, like 14 centuries ago, you know, that this was this was said, and you know, right when at this time, you know, the seventh century in our modern era, right? This is also one of the indications, yeah, said that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was not able to read and write. There was no, you know, Google up there, there was no CDC up there, no microscope, no telescope, you know, no ultrasound. Even then, he made profound sayings, mm -hmm. and those are coming from the creator himself. Yes. So we say that that is also an indication that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a true messenger. And then Islam is a true faith. Not just because of this, but there are other, other different ways that we can also give the evidence. But this is one indication of it. Yes. You know, our human body, you are in the medical field, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just briefly mention your background in the medical field. Yes. So I actually worked in healthcare for like nearly a decade as well, too. And I used to teach it as well, too. And I worked in, you know, in imaging, um, in radiology. I was a nuclear medicine technologist. And sure. yes, uh, this this slide right here is very true. We actually have more cells, quantitatively, number of bacteria on our body than our cells ourselves. So uh, bacteria and viruses are actually most of the time smaller than our cells themselves. But literally, there's not a square inch of your body where you're not covered possibly with E. coli or anything else, any various types of bacteria. From the hair, from the top of our head, all the way to the big toe and the nails, right, of the big toe. We are teeming with bacteria. I mean, not to scare anybody, that's how it is. Every single animal, every single tree, every single rock, rock for example, the whole earth, and yes, the human bodies. This is the way the creator has made it. But not every bacteria is a bad bacteria, right? Many mm. of them are bacteria which are beneficial to us. There are many which are living inside our gut. So these are all healthy bacteria, but then they are also harmful bacteria. So what is the solution? What is the preventive measure that Islam has given to us? So let's proceed really quickly. Then we want to take as many questions as possible from our, our listeners, right? Inshallah. Now, our hair itself, our head, our hair. You know, if we don't take care of our hair, hair loss can be you know, infection and coarse or thin hair, stunt in hair growth, all of this happens if we don't properly cleanse and or comb our hair. This is just a fact. So mm -hmm. what is the Islamic etiquette, Islamic recommendation? Muhammad, peace be upon him. Once he looked at a person and the person was you know, without the proper hygiene of his head, he looked at him and he mentioned to him, he made the gesture to that man ordering the person to comb his hair and have a proper hygiene of the hair, of yeah. the head. So what so, does Islam say to us? Yes, yeah, so yes, the, the simple saying that like, um, you know, if you're going to have long hair, if you're going to have hair, you should take care of it. You should comb your hair. You know, it's there's, there's the science behind it. Plus, like if you look at it too, like if you leave your hair as it becomes fizzy, there's actually more hydrogen bonds in your hair. So like straight hair is different from curly hair, but they all they still need combing. They all still need grooming. That's right, right. Exactly right. And obviously, Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was getting the revelation from God himself, is mentioning this proper 
hygiene of the head, of the hair, and proper combing and proper washing. And obviously, when we Muslims, uh, when we do the abolition five times a day, we also cleanse our hair, right? We do. So not only we are supposed to properly keep our hair nice and clean by combing, we are supposed to actually cleanse our hair at least, yes, when we do the massa, as we say, yes, at least five times a day. So just imagine a person, you know, cleaning themselves five times a day, they would be hygienic, they would be clean and smelling clean and whatnot. Uh, how about the face? You know, face is a resident to literally millions of bacteria, right? I mean, mm -hmm. on our nose, our cheeks, our chin, our eyelashes, all over the place. Improper facial etiquettes and hygiene may lead to acne and wrinkles and infection and whatnot. And what is the solution? Proper washing, frequent, frequent washing. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, and obviously it is in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that wash your faces, right? Along with washing our rest of the body. Yes. So we wash at least how many times, Yasir, when we do the ablution? So when we do wudu, it's sunnah to wash every step that you do in wudu, rinsing your mouth, your nose, and your face, you three times all the way around. Mm -hmm. You know, so like if you're doing wudu five times a day, that's where that number 15 is coming from. Three times each time you do wudu, three times five is 15. Right, right. So one time is obligatory, means, you know, each time when we do the wudu, so five times it's obligatory altogether for the whole day, and 15 times is also recommended, right? So the Prophet used to do 15 times, 10 times, or five times. So even washing five times each day our faces, it's very good hygiene coming from modern science, right? Obviously, Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned this way back in uh, the 7th century, right? So how about the next one over here? What comes after face, I believe? Oral hygiene. Uh -huh. You know, strep and lactobacilli and staph and colony bacteria, all of them, they reside in our oral cavities, in our mouth. Mm -hmm. If we don't properly take care of it, you know, ask any dentist, right? Ask any dentist, you know, cavities and plagues and tooth decay and on and on. And also bad breath. People may move away from us if you come close to them, right? Which is not good. So what does the ADA, American Dental Association, recommend? At least how many times yes here? Brush your teeth twice a day. At least twice, right? Uh -huh. Alhamdulillah. What does Islam advise? Yes. You know, Islam advice is that at least five times a day, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to brush with a special stick called the miswak, right? Have you heard about it? Yes. So how right? long? Miswak, long? right? So the Prophet said, make a regular practice of the miswak. That means it was a toothbrush with a twig of a tree. But really, it is healthy for the mouth and it's a pleasure for the creator. And there is one more hadith in which hadith means it's a saying of Muhammad, peace be upon him, in which he also encouraged and recommended flossing. Means picking in between the teeth with a floss or with something. So any particles which are in there, they come out. So mm -hmm. at least what? Many times a day, and this was the practice of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, before he did the ablution, before the prayer, at least five times a day. Yes. You know, when I look at uh, how many times to brush, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to wake up, he used to brush. The first thing he used to do, I mean, after doing the supplication to Allah. Before sleeping, he used to do it. Before eating and after eating, he used to do it, right? Uh -huh. Upon entering the home, he used to do it. Before reading the Quran, he used to do it. And then before five times washing, he used to do brushing of the teeth. Correct. How many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times at least each day, right? Wow. And you know, there's also that saying that the Prophet would have made uh, miswak, like brushing your teeth, part of wudu, but he did not want to make a hardship on the ummah, you know. Exactly. You know, and uh, the World Health Organization also recommends the benefits of miswak. Anybody can go to that uh, website and they can find out, right? Uh, so let's try to wrap up, inshallah. You know, one dollar miswak compared to the $20 billion dental industry. We don't want to take any business from the dentist, all right? But what we are saying is that this is a good preventive measure for yeah. the kids, for the adults, for any person. Simple miswak or simple toothbrush and properly brushing many times a day. Same thing with the nasal hygiene. Again, nose is a 
is a place of many, many bacteria. If you don't properly take care of our nose, you know, rhinitis and sinusitis and all of that may happen. But the proper way to clean our nose is frequent and really important, pulsating irrigation of the nose. And we do that, Yasir and all the Muslims, as we know, when we properly take the water, a mm -hmm. little bit sniffing, not too hard, a little bit sniffing, so the water circulates and the water comes out. Yes. yes. There you go, like that. So you take it up with your uh, um, right hand and you take it out with your left. So like yes. you, you put the, you, you cup water in your hand, just like as you would, like, you know, when you're gargling, but you take some water, put it, make it go up your nose a little bit, and then you kind of blow it out. So if there's any, like, you know, uh, uh, mucus and stuff like that, it comes out. So, you know, it, it, we, like, and subhanAllah, I was thinking about this the other day, the first we rinse our mouth, then our nose, if you've ever had a runny nose, and then you wash your face. So when you after you wash your face, anything else, it's all flowing out. If you ever have, you know, you're sick and you have a runny nose, so like you're, you in, clean your inside cavities first and then your outside one to kind of cleanse it all out. SubhanAllah. How perfect is God that the order of it actually is also the most hygienic, sterile way of doing it as well too. Exactly. Yeah. If you look at the order, you know, it's not the other way around. We don't want to put bacteria in our mouth, right? But taking them out when we have the proper order. And so all of these are uh, physical benefits, but there are spiritual benefits involved in every single step. Right? Because there is a hadith of the Prophet, if the person properly do the ablution, properly cleanse themselves before prayer, the sins they wash out, just mm -hmm. like the drops of water. Right? Yes. That is an incentive for all of us. And medical benefits are just like a bonus for us, right? Spiritual benefits are the first and foremost. We just need to. So ENT physicians, they also recommend pulsating irrigation of our cleansing of our nose, right? Important. Yes. Same thing with the ear hygiene. You know, otitis externa and uh, buildup of the wax, all of this can be prevented if you properly take care of the ears and also the back of the cleansing, the back of the ears, right? Yes. And we do that how many times, yes, sir? Each day, at least. Yes. Uh, you know, at least five times a day as we do masa. And think about that. Most people neglect this even when they take a bath and a shower, like the yes. folds of their ears, like they might have fungi and, and stuff growing in them. But we actually go through and clean the insides and the backs of our ears, you know. And obviously, Muhammad, peace be upon him, he mentioned, right? Uh, he used to wipe his head and entered his two fingers in his ears and wipe the back, really important. Wipe the back of the ears with his thumb, right? Same thing washing of the feet. Improper washing of the feet may result in so many ailments. And obviously, how many times we wash feet uh, last year again? 15 times because we do each foot three times. You know, the right foot Five first. Five to 15 and times, left. right? And yeah. look at this. Infections can be gone, the moisture and, the, you know, the odor and whatnot. And in between the toes, really important, right? In between the toes, we are supposed to. Not just splashing water in the feet and running away. No nicely in between the toes we are supposed to. So this is all modern science, modern preventive measures. These are all coming from the seventh century. Of a person, no technology, he only had the revelation from the creator. Shaving of the armpits and the pubic hair, you know, moisture builder, bacteria, infection and odor and whatnot. The prophet recommend that at least once in 40 days, before 40 days are done, as frequent as possible, we are supposed to you know, shave armpit and also the pubic hair, right? It's yes. really important. Um, and the 40 days is just, at, that's the last, you... you max. I could do it, and, yeah, that's the max. Yes. So, you know, you, you do it more frequently. But if you go past 40 days, there's things that your prayer might not be accepted. Or like, you know, you want, like, you know, you don't want to get to that point where you, you're at the end. So do it sooner rather than later. So like, yes, Muslims, yes, we grow our, our beards, but we keep, we... we our fitra is to kind of go back and keep it very clean. It's part of our faith to practice hair removal on our body and things like that. So, you know, just keep that in mind. I know in other faiths, there's no, that some of these things aren't fully defined, but in Islam, er, like, you know, it's everything. It's, you know, it's very um, comprehensive. Yeah, because Allah not only says, you know, to keep ourselves pure and hygienic, he also showed us through Muhammad, peace be upon him, how to do it in detail. And that is the beauty of Islam. Same thing with the nails. Improper, you know, uh, not proper hygiene of the nails can result in so many ailments. And Islam recommends 
maximum before 40 days, but as frequent as possible. We are supposed to obviously clean and uh, cut. So growing long nails is not part of Islam. Yes, especially those who work in healthcare, a lot of bacteria and things live under your fingernails. So the shorter your nails, like I'm a type of person who likes to keep my nails, re like don't, don't let even a week go by, you know, we're, like I think it's a lot of us grow up with the tradition of cutting our nails at least once a week, whether yes. it's Thursday night or Friday. So keeping our hands clean because as you wash your hands, unless you're every single time washing underneath each nail, that stuff accumulates and you're eating and or we're touching our phones and everywhere. So especially now when we're like literally, you know, social distancing and washing things that we touch, we, we you know, we should practice this at one of the important things of hand hygiene is keeping your nails short. So what you see up there, this will prevent all of the shortage of the tissue paper in the world, all right? <laughs> Look at this perfect solution. Washing our behinds, right? This is the best according to medical science. So look at this. Wiping, look at all the harms of wiping, right? The odor is still there. Only one third of the fecal material, uh, which is bacteria, all of it does not come out. There is some remains in the back if we just wipe with the tissue paper. But when we wash, we feel clean. Washer is the best way to clean anything. You know, when we do the car wash, for example, washing our bodies, washing anything, water is the best medium. Yes. And like, I, you know, can you kind of give the example of if someone was to take honey and put it on your hand, are you just going to wipe it away with the tissue and that's going to be clean? No, you're going to, if you want to wash something thoroughly, you use water. So like exactly. Muslims, it's you know, it's recommended that you, every single time you go to the bathroom, you wash with water. You know, or and wipe and things like that. So this is part of our hygiene. In fact, that like when we come to salah, we're supposed to be in a pure state of purity. Like before we pray, we do wudu, and every time we go to the bathroom, we cleanse ourselves so you know we don't have any impurities on us. And also, you know, trimming of the mustache, growing of the beard, circumcision for the males, uh, using girds, smelling things as perfume, keeping your houses clean. So it's not just body clean. The clothes have to be cleaned. I right? purify your garments. We are supposed to keep our houses clean. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, you must clean your houses, correct? So mm -hmm. any and all of these, it's important for us to know. Even the roads, we are supposed to keep them clean. It's the obligation of Muslims. That removing any harm from the road is charity in Islam. So let's just summarize, right? Yes, sir. Then mm -hmm. we can take a couple of questions, inshallah. Let's just summarize. It's important that Islam is a faith of guidance. Yes. Solutions for humanity, preventing from many calamities. And one of the ways to do it is to keep ourselves clean. Mm -hmm. And this is coming from the seventh century. Modern science is aligning towards that hygienic, preventive solutions that Islam has provided. Correct. And we know we know if Islam provides the solutions and if, if there's a way of life that doesn't address something or kind of just leaves it up, every single facet of our life is addressed, including going to the bathroom, including how to wash ourselves into the detail that God sent a prophet, a messenger to show us to be a role model. To, so this is how you should properly take care of yourself, how you should properly take care of your teeth, how we should wash, how we should do this. And the model back then from the seventh century up until now it's still relevant today the the example that he set it's still a, a, a high bar for us to reach that like you know uh, like wow so it's this what they practiced back then was more clean than what like our standards our bare minimum standards are you know it, it, it is something amazing and something for us to kind of co co you know ponder and reflect about that it is very comprehensive every single aspect is covered so we invite our viewers to look into Islam, you know, to converse with us. You know, there's so much misinformation out there. The best way that we can educate about Islam is to converse with Muslims who are knowledgeable. But even better than that is to read a copy of the Quran in English. If you only know English or Spanish, read it with the proper context. Give us a call and we'll be more than happy to help you understand what Islam is and what Islam is not. Correct. And the number is it's toll free. It's 1-800-662-ISLAM. 1-800-662-ISLAM. And feel free to comment on videos like this. Visit us on our website at gainpeace.com. Right? Feel free to go, go through and browse through, read anything, check out any of our previous videos. Right? 
and we will do our best to get back with you and engage, inshallah. Okay, with that, Jazakallah uh, Khair for visiting. So Yasir, awesome job, mashallah. Give us a call, engage with us. May God guide and bless all of us and make it easy for us. The ailment that we are all going through, give us patience, give us a cure. But the best thing that we can do is to give us guidance. So we can have the best in this world with Allah's help and mm -hmm. paradise in the hereafter with Allah's mercy. With that, Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Peace of God be upon each single one of you. Mm -hmm. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.